Hey everybody, I am Artosis, he is Tasteless, he is White Raw, and he is Strelok. Wow, Artosis, that was an amazing intro. But yes, one of those three, he's me, Tasteless. I am happy to be here with you, Artosis. We do have two uh, amazing players battling today. It's White Raw and Strelok, both from Ukraine. But make no mistake, this is no provincial match, Artosis. Yeah, man, this is the winner's round four, okay? We are deep in the tournament, and in fact, this is a best of five, and there are no two players that I think I'd rather see in a best of five against each other. I have to tell you, over the years in StarCraft One and StarCraft Two, I have watched and commentated about 5,000 best of fives between these two players. They always meet each other. It's so weird, too, because uh, Ukraine, obviously not like the biggest country in Europe, uh, you know what I mean? It's like we have, like, you know, let's say two uh, players from America or anything like that. But, you know, like for esports, these guys have such a solid scene. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of is Poland. Yeah. Um, you know, you would never think if you if you weren't into esports that Poland would be such a powerhouse in, the, uh, in that area. Well, and then you find yeah. out, no, in fact, it's huge there. No, I, I know. It's quite crazy. But uh, between Damaga, White Ross, Strelk, and now Cass added in StarCraft 2, we have a bunch of heavy hitters, man. So, White Raw normally, over the course of uh, the years, has uh, you know done better than Strelok overall, but Strelok, he takes matches off White Raw, so we're just going to have to see how it goes. The map is Crevasse, uh, a huge macro map. We almost always see macro games here. Now, both players have pretty interesting styles. White Raw will do anything. This guy will do yeah, anything. Yeah, you know, the thing about White Raw is that he really understands the game on a very impressive level. Uh, in a very impressive way. Sometimes when I watch Straylock, I think, I don't know if I really agree with that. Yeah. I don't think it's the way that I would handle this matchup. But at the same time, who am I to criticize Straylock? He's had such success in StarCraft 1 as well as 2. Yeah, I don't, exactly. Uh, that, I would feel exactly the same as you, Tasteless. His style is not one that I particularly prescribe to. I mean, he gets very aggressive. He loves base trades. He loves to get do a lot of drops. Uh, sometimes we see some one base all-ins and stuff. The guy mixes it up. You have to give him that. I think, you know, for somebody like White Rod, this is one of the harder players for him to really predict. Yeah, yeah. But again, these two know each other so much, so well. They practice together so much, hit each other in tournaments so much. There's going to be a lot of inside mind games that we are not privy to. No, we're definitely the case. Our and they both is. think in Ukrainian, so even if we were privy to what's going on in their minds, we wouldn't understand. We wouldn't know. Assuming they think in their native language Ukrainian, you know? Sometimes people think it pictures are toasts. Yeah, do they? Some people do. I don't. I think only Egyptians think in pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have three barracks on the way here for Straylock, and it looks like White Raw is opening up with a fairly similar opener here, getting a quick yeah. nexus. Yeah, just both expanding, utilizing the map and its features the way that it should be used, and uh, you know, just getting those units out so that they can't really kill each other. It looks to me to be the beginning of a very even game. Yeah, a very even game and one that shouldn't end right away either. Uh, these are two players, you know, uh, they're opting to do builds that are very healthy and safe for this map. Mm. There's no way that anybody can take a major risk in the next five minutes and try to end it really. Yeah, yeah, that would be a strange uh, fork in the build for sure. Now we see that White Raw is ahead on supply, 33 to 30 at the moment, but not a big deal really. You know, the units that Protoss produces, they cost more supply, and of course Chrono Boost allows them to get out more probes quicker than Strelk can get out of SCVs, but with the mules, their economies are going to be very close to even. Yeah, that's absolutely the case. Um, you know, so for the time being, uh, we still see Straylock. I, I want to point out both these guys not transferring too many workers to that early expansion. Yeah. There's no need to do that right away in StarCraft 2. Uh, the workers mine much more efficiently in StarCraft 2 than they ever did in StarCraft 1. That's very true, Tasteless. <coughs> now, a couple more gates going up for White Raw. He's getting that uh, Chrono Boosted Warp Gate upgrade out. 32 probes to 25 SCDs already, so showing the impact of Chrono Boost on this matchup. White Raw really getting a very solid economy going, but of course that mule makes up for it. 
And um, as we can see now, uh, this is a smart move by White Rod to move out with the Stalkers. The Stalkers much stronger than the Zealots uh, in their ability to uh, kite them mm -hmm. with ease. So you might as well send a few Stalkers out there, take out, um, you know, <coughs> these, uh, any, any Marines on the map, since the Stalkers can kite them so well, and uh, just get some map control. Yeah, you know, look at this. Threatening that uh, destructible debris, he wants to try to take that out, force a bunker, you know, Stalk already doing so. Strong also getting stim and a starport with reactors, so very strong esque You know, he wants to get drops going. He wants to be able to put some pressure onto White Raw. But White Raw, will he get something out to be able to see this coming, or will he just have to blindly predict it? Well, for the time being, it looks like he's going to have to blindly predict it. Uh, there is a proxy pylon here right now, making it look like he's actually Ooh. being more aggressive than he is. This is basically going to allow White Raw to get a free expansion. Straylock is defending. Mm -hmm. White Raw is actually just parking a few units outside the front door. Uh, interesting to me, uh, White Raw taking such a quick third base and getting his robot at the same time, so taking and expanding once again. But that might be all right, just because Straylock isn't going for a huge land army right now. He's going really for more drop base play, and finally the first Marine of the day going down to those Stalkers. And as you can see, Straylock still in a defensive posture, lands the factory with the two bunkers next to the depot. There's literally no way for the Stalkers to run up there or run by. And at the same time, it looks like he's going to go ahead and load up those uh, Marines into a medevac and try to do a drop where Straylock, or uh, rather White Rock, can't counterattack. Yeah, it looks like it might be about 12 Marines moving out tasteless. In fact, that is exactly what it is now. Will White Raw be prepared? He's already moved back his stalker, so I think he's feeling it. He's like, well, if you're not going to come down that front ramp, you must be doing something, and your name is Strelok, my name is White Raw, you're probably going to try to drop me. Looks like that's going to be the case, Sartosis. The sky is blue, so is the ocean, you're probably going to try to drop yeah. me. Yeah. Just stay these guys. And yeah. <laughs> you are wise, Sartosis. All right. Well, here come the uh, medevac dropships now. And the question is, is White Raw prepared? Does he have... He yeah. does. All Looks right. pretty prepared to me. Five stalkers, more than enough to hold this off as long as you position them correctly. And very smartly, Strelok pulls a, a Yui. I don't know if U-turns are okay in that area of the air. Over I didn't off. see uh, you know one of those U-turn arrows there, but you know sometimes you have to do the illegal move, Artosis. You, you, know, you want to come through with a win. Do. We have a very small little drop moving out now this way. What are we just going to do with that? Might do simultaneous drops. You know, maybe one at the third, one at the expansion. But is dropping off these Marines. So uh, we may now see just a little bit of harassment. Maybe taking down some rocks and stuff. You may as well make use of those units while they're out there. Yeah, absolutely. I think right now uh, Straylock is kind of looking for an opening. But once he figures out that his opponent has already expanded again, and it was actually quite some time ago, he might enter panic mode, Artosis. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We have a Colossus about to pop out, and that, of course, is going to help out immensely versus Marine Drops, as long as he can get it close to them. Let's see how quickly Strelok reacts. Will he be able to pick up his drops quick enough? And do we have the first drop coming, Tasteless? Is it time? He's going to go into the main here, and here's Ooh. another one in the expansion. Going to go uh, for some of these probes. Very nice. Yeah, I really like this. And look at that. As all the units come out to try to attack White Raw there, I mean, uh, Strelok's drops there. Look at this, a drop in the main, but White Raw has split up his units just right and chases away the drop. Right now, 65 probes of 62 SCVs. Strelok taking his third base at this time, uh, the epitome of close. You know, unfortunately, Strelok did not actually do enough damage. Yeah, he's, he's not doing much yet. Yeah, I mean, he's sure he's keeping White Raw at home, but White Raw is finding at home. He's hoping one of these uh, medevac dropships is going to fly into a group of stalkers. Mm. And uh, meanwhile, he's getting more money more quickly. Only just now is the third base for Straylock up and running. Mm -hmm. On the minimap, we see a fourth base coming up for White Raw. And that is a quick fourth base, responding to Straylock's third. But, you know, Straylock hasn't done any real damage yet, so that's going to work out. Even against some Marine Marauder composition, where oftentimes you have to let Terran get the bases quicker. But uh, White Raw, he is on the ball. He is doing every little thing he has to do, and a Twilight Council about to finish double forages on the way. Charge before blink. I'm in love with this Ukrainian. And you know what, Artosis? That's where all of his chrono boosts are going to start going. Mm -hmm. He's going to chrono boost that stuff out so quickly. Uh, right now, he's continuing to assert his dominance on the map, chasing down 
uh, small forces of Terran units, keeping them out of the center and forcing their little medevac dropships to orbit around the corners of the map instead of in the center. Well, we have that Nexus almost done. Will Strzok get any of these drops to actually work now? He does know Colossus is out, so he's making Vikings. He's got to keep these medevacs alive even if he loses the units inside them. That is very pivotal. He's trying to edge out of here. He will barely get out, uh, almost in range of that cannon. And we have two more cannons up here. Here comes the medevac drop yet again. That's going to be annoying, of course. Uh, White Raw, he does not want uh, to make those cannons. He needs cannons. to get out. He needs to get out of that location and fast. And look at that. The double cannons are ready. And now he's getting so ready for these drops. Look at that. The stalker's being warped in. This drop over there, not doing a lot of work. And, oh, easily erasing this. And the medevac's tasteless. Almost all die. One three hit point medevac does remain. But I, that's that's not a lot of medevacs. Look at this. Just Vikings and a bunch of units that can't be healed. If he wanted those drops to work, he might have wanted to move his army into the middle of the map. Yeah, that's that might have point. actually scared the Protoss into relocating. Instead, he's trying to drop all over the place while uh, just sitting. You're basically just crossing your fingers and saying, "Man, I hope my opponent is deficient in this way." Yeah, and that's my strategy for winning. Well, that's not a good approach to that kind of stuff. You are very right, tasteless as always. A Templar archive is going up. And both players are just about maxed. Some ghosts on the way, blink on the way, two two on the way. Uh, you know the plus Viking attack on the way. But one thing I have to say is Strzok needs another starport. He's making another command center, sure. But yeah. He needs a second starport. You need double starport with double uh, as you max out with double reactor, so you can really produce medevacs and uh, Vikings. And if you don't do that, look at this: nine Vikings. Sure, that's that's good, a pretty nice number. But only one medevac is out. And I don't even think the medevac is. Oh, there it is. But just one is not enough to heal all those units. That medevac needs to be unionized. That's some serious. Uh, yeah, that's an over being overworked, right man. Um, that medevac is showing all, sewing all the shoes. Yeah, no kidding. Spoon uh, for the win. So let's see here. You know, he might be able to engage the Protoss army if he gets the right angle. If the uh, Vikings can get enough volleys off. We have an Archon on the way over here. It looks like Straylox deemed it. Time to do this! Well, he has a lot of Vikings. They have finished on plus one attack. He has plus two attack on his Marines and Marauders. White Raw pulling away. Now we have some Jukin and Jivin. Straw trying to decide where he wants to place his aggression, but again, only one Medivac, so I'm a little bit scared. Basically, that Medivac's gonna do almost nothing, just healing a, you know, a single unit at a time. And here he goes, going for this Nexus. Not even stimming. Yeah, and well, you know, he doesn't have a. He only has that one medevac, so he, he may have yeah. that much. But here we go. I want to stim and get out of here now. Taking out this Nexus. And, well, the Vikings going to work on these Colossus, or at least trying to. Instead, half of them not even firing almost that whole time. Sherlock not really microing a whole lot, just kind of sitting there while. And now he's landing. And now the landing Colossus against is there. Colossus. Oh. Uh, uh, definitely some miscontrol here, some misdecisions by Sherlock, and now it's trying to snipe a Colossus with ground units. No, not going to happen. And suddenly, look at this. I mean, three three Colossus left. Sherlock has nothing. Look at this. This is this is the equivalent of nothing this late game. And um he is expanding more and more, which is nice, but he messed that up, man. Well he should have shot down the first Nexus and ran for it. Yeah. And expanded. So he didn't have to go inside the main base where there's no way to turn this around. It's just myopic decision making. And now you can see uh, as White Rock uh, streams down the map, he wipes out the planetary the second it finishes. Zalots, Archon, Stalkers all moving in here. And look, Artosis, I don't see any way uh, that our Terran player can recover. No, it really looks like he is going to be dead. We have those Colossus just come in with their beams. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's a sound that sure uh, sounds like you're better than me at that. Thank oh, you. God. All right, well, I mean, there's just too many stalkers here. There's too many colossi. Sherlock will not be able to make enough units to actually get anything done here. In fact, he's losing that expansion. He's only mining from two locations at the moment while White Raw has remade all his bases. Zealot's in on the way. And uh, just these final stims, and I think that Sherlock is going to have to do. Yeah, this game is basically over, and there it is, GG. But Let's go on to game number two, Artosis, and see if Straylock can engineer a comeback. It is a best of five, tasteless. I feel a strong victory in the short future.